Hi, this is Vicky from the Spellbound Bead Company and in this video I'm going to talk to you about tubular peyote stitch. We use it in a lot of our designs, particularly the needle case designs and the birthday box designs that we've um, launched. It's a really useful stitch. It can be nice and smooth if you do it all in uh, delicate beads. It makes a really nice smooth cylinder or you can get more texture into it by using seed beads. You can use a variety of seed beads which will give you um, different textures on the surface. It's also great for embellishing so you can do that as well. Um, tubular peyote is very similar to flat peyote so if you've not done flat peyote stitch before I'd suggest you go and have a look at the um, peyote stitch videos on our channel to give you a better idea of how the stitch works before you attempt it in the round um, so if you want to go and have a look at those and then come back when you're ready we will uh, get started we're going to start by looking at the peyote stitch grid. So this is how you'll see a lot of um, peyote stitch designs laid out. This is a, a flat representation of a 3D tube. So if you have a look, you can see just here, we've marked on the first uh, two rows of the grid so with peyote stitch um with tubular peyote stitch as with flat peyote you pick up the first two rows of beads um in one pass and then start embellishing on the third row so the tubular peyote grids have also got this line marked on them here it's marked in red on this grid or if i show you we can see it a bit more clearly on this plain grid here we've got it um just a single um gray dot or a dotted line running just through the grid here and this represents the first bead of every row um it's also known as the step up so the first bead of the row is also the last bead that you pass through to reposition your needle for the next row so you need to make sure you do this because otherwise um you can do it you can add an accidental increase into your work and then the patterns won't work the numbers will be wrong um, and we'll cover this in a bit more detail Let's get started. Um, I'm working on 20 beads in the round. I'm going to pick up the, the first bead of every round. I'm going to pick up a white bead so you can see how the step up travels. And then so you can define the rows, I'm just going to alternate between the pink and the purple so that you can see where the beads are going. So I'm going to start by picking up 20 beads. and that's 20 okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to join these beads into a circle just by passing through the first bead on the round a second time so there you can see we've got them in a circle now because your beads are cylinders they're not going to sit in a perfect circle you will get the odd v shape or little gap so just make sure when you're adding your next round of beads that you keep your tension nice and even and this will level itself out so here we go so the next row of beads is the same we work in peyote stitch so i'm going to pick up a white bead to start the row so this will be the first bead of the row and the last bead that we pass through. I'm going to skip one and I'm going to go through the next bead, so through the pink one. And then just pull it so that it's nice and tight. And the beads are sitting, the white beads sitting on top of the purple. There's no gaps. Just try and control it. So if you wrap the tail thread around your finger, that will help um, with the tension. And just keep it nice and sturdy. And go through so we're just going to go round and in this row we're just going to add one purple bead above the purple beads that we picked up last time round so just keep going through oops and 
and do this. Now I can get my whole hand, my, my whole fingers in here because of the size of the beads I'm using. It's nice and comfortable to work with. You might find for the first couple of rows of tubular peyote at least you would be helpful to have a former of some for, sort that could go down the middle. So tubular barrel of a pen or um, a spoon handle, wooden spoon handle, a pencil. If you're working one of our needle case designs and if you put the needle case in for the first couple of rows, then you've got something to hold on to, which is always the problem with the start of any beadwork is that you haven't got a lot to hold on to and that can make it a little awkward. Right. So here we go. Before I put the last bead of the row on, I'm just going to move this keeper bead back a little bit so it's out of the way and we can see what we're doing. I'm going to pick up the bead, the final bead for the row. I'm going to go through the white bead from the previous row here. Through the white bead of the previous row to complete the row we're on and then I'm going to come up through the first bead that we added in this row, this white bead here, to pull through there. And there you can see you've got your first three rounds of peyote all done and ready to go. Okay, so tubular peyote essentially is just repeating this around and around. So I shall show you again. So the first bead in the row is your where your step up is going to be. So that's the white bead. It's the bead with the dotted line through on the grid or it's the grayed out bead on that first grid I showed you. And as you can see, it's traveling one bead around with every row. So I'm going to pick up some pink beads this time. So just keep coming round. Okay, and here we go. So we're at the end of the row again. So pick up the bead for the end of the row. This is the first bead we're going to pass through because that is the next one around in the row. And then we're going to step up through the first bead of this row so that we're in the correct position to start the next row. You can do these both at once or you can do them one at a time if that's easier for you. And again, so pick up the one and through. And then let's move that one so I don't pick it up by mistake. We're just going to keep coming through. I'm working clockwise around this tube, so I'm actually working in the opposite direction to the grid that I've shown you, um, because this is the comfortable way for me to work around. If you need to work in the an anti-clockwise direction, that's also fine. You know, you're the boss of the beads, not the other way around. So let me show you here. So again, through the white bead on the round that we're completing, and then up through the first bead on the round that we're working on and pull that through. Now, if I lie that down like that, you can definitely see how the step up's traveling. And if we compare that to the grid, if I turn the grid this way up, no. And if we compare that to the grid, then you can see that the, the the step ups traveling one bead along. So if I carried on this, if this had actually got a pattern on it, um, my pattern would be reversed because I'm working in the opposite direction. So that's something to bear in mind um, as you're working. But you can also see 
that as we're moving along, the first bead of the row is moving. So on a grid, when you're reading the grid, what you need to remember is that the first couple of rows are fine because of the way peyote stitch works, the first bead you're adding is the first bead of the row. But on the, the third row here, you start with this bead and you're going to work across there, across here, and then you have to come round and remember this bead here is the last bead of the row. So it would be the last coloured bead before the step up. So, and then as you move along, as you move up, you come around and you've got another bead here. Next row, you end with two and it works across. You do sometimes see peyote stitch, tubular peyote stitch grids that are slanted. So the first bead of every row is along this edge and your work comes out across this way. So you never have to read around a grid, so to speak. So that's something that's worth looking out for as well. So that's essentially tubular peyote stitch. Now, what this is good for is if you've done any work with bezels, then you can decrease, um, you can use peyote stitch to decrease to cover a bezel. We'll do this in a separate video so that if you just need the tubular peyote basics, you've got them here. So I'll just do this one more row just to really reinforce what you need to know for the basics. So here we go. So all the way around. Okay, oops, my fingers out the way. Through. And the last bead of the row is the pink. So through the last bead of the previous row and then up through the first bead of this row. And there we go, there is tubular peyote stitch.